Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This video I'm going to show you some of the enhancements to the slice modifier you can get with the slice tools, which you can get freely from wallworm.com. So I'm going to select these two objects here, and we're going to add a slice modifier. I'm going to hit X to bring up the menu to list things, and I'm just going to choose slice. I'm just going to add this modifier. See, it added the slice plane that's slicing them across here. So one of the main things is, once you add a slice modifier, you'll notice that there's this extra rollout here that's not available normally with the slice modifier. These are just a bunch of functions that help working with slice modifiers more efficiently. First, what we're going to do is click Align to Face. We're going to make it so that this slice plane for these two objects slices right across the top of this object here. So I'm going to click here and just click, oop, click this top face. And you see now the slice plane is aligned right there and it's cutting them in half. This is more convenient than having to go up to the slice plane, choose a uh, alignment mode, and then pick an object. Right here we can just click the align to slice plane and it will automatically align the slice plane. So in this case it added one up here instead. And I can move it back down here. So that's one of the new functions in the slice plane. So the next feature I'm going to go over is a, a chaining tool in here that is uh, helpful for continuously cutting up objects and not having to keep on manually adding new modifiers in the event that you want to cap off any slice results. So um, assume that you're in uh, a game like the Source Engine where you want to do BSP geometry where every block has to be convex and sealed. Uh, so if we select this object and let's assume we want to cut uh, a path so extra blocks around here. What we can do now is add a slice modifier to this. I'm going to hit X again and go to Slice. Add a slice modifier. I'm going to switch to the top view of this. Maximize my top view here. And I'm going to change my grid down, bring it down a little bit. Okay. So what I want to do is actually slice between two points. This is like the quick slice function inside an editable poly. So I'm going to click this option here that says quick slice. And it's going to allow me to pick two points. So I'm going to pick from this point to this point. And notice it sliced it and immediately added a cap holes and went to another slice modifier. And now I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to just stay on the grid here. And again, it capped it and then add another slice because I have split mesh. And I'm going to do the same thing up here like this and another one over here like this. And I'm going to right click the end and I'm actually going to um, I can delete that top one or I can just simply leave it where it is. Let's go back to the perspective view and maximize this. And you'll see now that this object is uh, sliced up into a bunch of uh, individual blocks. Now, if I add an editable, if I add an edit poly modifier on top of this, if I select any one of these, hit up, you'll see that it sliced it and it sealed it. So the slice is also capped. So that's convenient. So the next thing uh, we'll want to look at here is there's a function over here for cap and collapse. There's also cap, collapse, and explode. And we're going to explore those. So in this one, for cap and collapse, what happens here is when I click this, it's going to add one more cap modifier, and it collapse it down to an editable poly. So if I do that, you'll notice we're now here at the editable poly phase. And this is kind of what we did a minute ago with uh, the edit poly modifier. So it collapsed it down. So I undid all that and brought it back to this state. And now we're going to use the cap, collapse, and explode function. And what that will do is actually do this, it does the same thing, but then it breaks all of the chunks into individual pieces. So now these are actually individual separate objects uh, in the scene. So if I select this, you'll see that it's a separate object. So again, we're going to go in here and show some examples 
uh, of the slicing again. So we're going to slice and align these to, to align with that. X, slice, and align the face. And in this case, I'm going to actually change it to remove top. And then if we want to cap and collapse it, cap and collapse, and now there, collapsed. And finally, we're going to go over a couple other things. One is, generally when you're doing the slice planes, it's best to use orthographic views with the, with the quick slice functions. So if you're wanting to uh, quick slice objects, if I do it in the perspective view, you may find that the, the slice isn't exactly aligned to what you thought it was going to be. So it's always better to do it in an orthographic view. So if I change this to a, an orthographic view and do the quick slice, you're going to see that it actually did do exactly across. So perspective view, you may not get the results that you actually expect. So now we're going to talk about the final feature here, and that's this uh, material. Uh, what happens is when you do the cap and collapse or the cap collapse explode, it will assign a material ID to the capped faces based off of these rules. Automatic will look for any material that you have applied to this object that is named either slice or tools slash tools no draw, which is something for the source game engine. You can also choose this explicit ID. If you choose that option, the sliced capped materials will be this ID. And if you choose default, then that will just use whatever's uh, in whatever material ID Max provides by default when it uses the cap holes modifier. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to apply this multi-material to these uh, three buildings here. And notice I have a gray, a green, and I have another material named Slice. It's in the material ID 3 slot. So I'm going to add a slice object. Slice modifier. Align it to the face. And now I'm going to do a cap collapse explode. I'm going to choose default. Nope, we're going to choose automatic. So it searches for a material named slice cap collapse explode. Now when I select one of these and move it up, you'll see that it uses that material. I don't, I must not have told this material to appear in the viewport. Click that button and now you can see that we have those uh, with that material in those. So this keeps all the ones that are inside set to that material. We can also have changed this to a name called tools slash tools no draw. And the reason this name is used is because that's a common uh, specific name for source engine work, which a lot of this tool was designed with that in mind. So note, had we, let's add another slice modifier to here. Uh, you don't have to hit X. You can also just add a slice modifier directly through standard way. So, instead of automatic, had we chose explicit ID, in this case, I'm going to choose uh, material ID 2 to make it green. We'll just align the face and slice it here. So it's aligned to that, just so we have a point here. Now we're going to do uh, cap, collapse, and explode. We have explicit material ID 2, so it's not going to search for any IDs. Now when we switch check on this, you'll see that it's the green material ID number two from our multi-material. Again, my name is Sean Olson. This is the Slice Tools, which you can get free from wallworm.com, and you can get it, and you can get all kinds of other tools from wallworm.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, and have a good day.